Today we will discuss another experiment that is Stephen Boltzmann hypothesis, wherein we have determined the constant value of Stephen Boltzmann. Now the aim of the experiment goes like this: to determine the value of Stephen Boltzmann constant for radiation, we will start another experiment that is Stephen Boltzmann hypothesis. The aim of the experiment is to determine the value of Stephen Boltzmann constant. For radiation heat transfer, the specification are as follows: the specified material is copper. The size of the disc that is used, we have diameter 20 mm and the thickness of the disc is 0.5 mm. The brass plate it is having a diameter of 250 mm and the thickness 12 mm. The heater capacity is 1.5 kilowatt. The total number of thermocouples used are five. The mass of this specimen it is five grams. Now the schematic diagram looks like this. This is the hemisphere. It is having a diameter of two fifty mm and thickness of twelve mm. Now over which water is accumulating. Now once water is hot enough, it will start. Emitting the radiation, wherein the specimen which is placed at the center of the hemisphere will gain the heat out of radiation. Now, the heat transfer equation for this is given by m C P into d T. That is equated to the radiative mode of heat transfer, that is sigma A into T A to the power four minus T D to the power Now here we have mounted three thermocouple, T1, T2, and T3, and T4 is the specimen thermocouple or the specimen temperature. The tabular column is as follows: first we have serial number, then temperatures T1, T2, T3. We have time, it should be in seconds, and temperature T4, which is nothing but the disk temperature. and once the water is hot enough initial temperature of the specimen is taken with a lapse of time of say 15 seconds the temperature t4 has to be noted down now as we move along with the time t4 goes on increasing that is shown in the graph now this is the temperature t4 of the specimen temperature it goes on increasing along with the lapse of the now here we will find the slope which is dt upon dt where dt is the changing temperature and this dt is changing time now this will be used in the formula mcp into dt by dt now the calculation part is very simple we need to calculate the average temperature of t1 t2 and t3 that should be kept in kelvin T4 is nothing but the specimen temperature or the disk temperature that should be kept in Kelvin. Then again we are using the conservation of energy. The energy of the heat that is dissipated from the water all has been absorbed by the test specimen. That is the assumption made. No loss of energy to the surroundings. Now if we equate both the equations, M C P D T by D T. To the sigma a into T A to the power four minus T D to the power four, we can easily calculate the unknown value of sigma. Here a is nothing but the area of the specimen. M we have given this is the mass of the specimen. C P we can note it down from the data handbook. D T by D T is calculated out of the graph. T A we have calculated as the average temperature. T D you have noted down from the experimental setup. So all the values are known except the value of sigma, which can be calculated as sigma is equal to M C P into D T by D T over area into T A to the power four minus T D to the power four. Now the value of sigma should be of the order of five point six seven into ten to the power minus A. Watt per meter Kelvin.
Thank you. And this, you need to calculate the constant value of Stephen Bozeman, which is 5.67 and 20 to the power minus 8. And in this case, we are introducing a mode of heat transfer, which is the radiation. Now, at the top, we have a water tank. We will heat the water to certain temperature. Then, we will allow that water to collect on the dome, which is as shown in the figure, the water will come and collect over this surface and we have a test specimen as shown in the figure. We have mounted four thermocouples T1, T2 and T3 and T4 is the specimen temperature, T5 is the water inlet temperature. Now once it attains certain temperature, we will allow the water through this pipe, this should be in line with the pipe, then that is the open for the water flow. It will accumulate all over the surface. Now we have the dimension of this hemisphere and how much of radiation it will occur that we can calculate by noting down the temperature of specimen. Now as the water starts circulating, the temperature keeps on varying. Once we know that, we can draw the graph of it is as follows. We will be again equating the two energies, one given by the water and the collected by the test specimen. We have one equation for the heat lost by the water as mcp to d by dt and one more equation of radiation that is sigma a into t to the power 4 where sigma is the unknown that is the value that we need to calculate out of this experiment. Now the heat that is radiated from the hot water will be gained by the test specimen that is T4. With the lapse of 20 minutes you keep on taking the reading of T4 along with the time. If you take the graph of temperature versus time, you will have dt by dt that can be used in the formula.